you guys, Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. Welcome, it's okay, lay that down. Welcome to my she cave. My big girl and I are sitting here. Come on, lay down. I didn't mean to bump you. Lay down. That way you're not in my way. That's copper, by the way. Um, I thought today we would talk about, hey Michelle, I thought we would talk about, um, books. So that's why I'm sitting on my floor here in my in my office in my she cave. We have the man cave and the she cave in our house. And uh, first of all, today is day 29 of my 30 day November 30 day gratefully prepared challenge. The challenge was to have everybody get involved and we're going to continue this challenge actually by the way, folks. Um cuz being grateful is something that we should be every day, not just in November. And um, it certainly is a good time, and it's a good thing to do, but it's something we should do daily, all year round. And the purpose of the challenge was because when you are grateful and you acknowledge all the wonderful and amazing things that are going on in your life on a daily basis, you are in a more positive mindset. You are in a healthier mindset. Um, you are more happy and more joyful. And uh, therefore, I feel that life itself, in general, is so much better. So, in doing so, I also feel that we have an opportunity to learn better because our minds are in a better place, um, our hearts are in a better place. So, that's why I did this challenge. Now, yesterday I did mention that every day doing a video is very difficult for me. I did not realize that was going to be the case, but with the ups and downs still of my health, it cause some struggles and I don't want to tell you I'm going to do something and not be able to because that's not how I roll. Unfortunately, that's how it went. So what we're going to do moving forward is once a week we are going to do a video and get together and chat and whether I will do my podcast that day and, and, and share you guys, you know, on that journey or whether we will talk about a certain topic, but I want to continue to be grateful every day. And today I am grateful for so many things. I am really so blessed. I am thankful for the companionship of my dogs. These dogs are wonderful animals. They are our homestead um, protection and they are also man's best friend, as they always say, and it's very true. They are part of our family. They might have fur, but they're a family member. And they all have unique personalities. Uh, the others aren't up here right now, so I'm at risk being on the floor here because there is a time that might come while we are doing this that I get mauled. But um, I'm, I'm just so blessed in so many ways, and it's so hard every day to pick one thing to be grateful for. I'm grateful for so much. I'm grateful to be able to get up every morning. I'm grateful to be feeling better today. I'm grateful for God's Word that I read this morning. Um, it always seems to be on key and uh, what I need to hear and what I need to be taught. Um, I am thankful also for the ability to make many, many beverages. Um, with my herbal health knowledge and my herbal pantry, this is a rose hip and elderberry tea that I'm drinking today. I also had my morning coffee with coconut and almond milk and stevia. Uh, so. You know, there's so much to be thankful for, and I just find myself being grateful and thankful for so much in my life all day long, and um, and being able to see my hearts, my mountain man sees eagles. I also used to see eagles, but my hearts are very prevalent. And yesterday we were out hunting, he and I, and that fresh air really helped me out. And uh, I'm not experiencing as much head pain today, so I'm so thankful for that. But I saw a multitude of hearts while we were out there. And and the other day while he and I were driving, uh, we saw seven eagles. Uh, so it's pretty amazing um, when God gives you, you know, puts things in front of you to remind you, you know, that life is good, that he is there. And I'm, I'm just very thankful for that. I see a bunch of you joining me. Um, let me know where you're from and what you are grateful for today. And like I said, today I wanted to talk about books. There's so many levels of preparedness and so many different levels of things that we can be doing to educate and make ourselves more knowledgeable. And books is one of the first places to start. As you can see, I love books. There is a bookshelf over here behind the camera that you can't see. And downstairs I have a very tall bookshelf in my dining room um, that is also loaded down. And I have books over here on this side of my office. So 
books are something that I grew up really absolutely loving. I would climb in a tree and uh, we made a tree house. Mind you, it was like old scrap wood from a uh, uh, pallet, sorry. And something popped up on my screen and totally blew my train of thought. But um, it was from an old pallet. The wood was not really the best, but there was a Y in the tree and I could climb into it and we hammered some boards in there and that was our tree house. The mountain boy has an elaborate tree house that turned into a barn so you know that's a blessing for him but I was very blessed in just those simple boards going across the Y of the tree and I would be out there and I would read and I would read we'd go to the beach over the 4th of July and I would lay there on the beach the whole week and just read book after book I I love to read I love being transported into places and even when I'm reading my books that are educational to learn how to do bushcraft and and traditional skills it still takes you back you end up in a place where you know you imagine what it was like for them to be living um, the way they were and to to be just so blessed to have that book and that knowledge being passed down all of my grandparents are um, in heaven and I don't have them here to pick their brains and I wish when I was younger that this part of me um, that is now very vibrant would have been more curious um, you know when we're kids we don't think of these things you know I always felt like I was in the wrong era and as I grew up and the older I got the more I realized that I was born a hundred years too late however one of my friends Chad mentioned to me that I was born exactly when God wanted me born so that I could pass on the knowledge that I'm learning so that was a pretty neat perspective but pick and dig into your your grandparents and your great grandparents if they're still on this earth you know tap into their knowledge banks they have so much knowledge and even if they don't have the knowledge they have stories and those stories take you to a place that is just really amazing hey Chad glad to have you joining me I just mentioned you but books are just a unique thing there's so many books and um, I don't know if you can read the titles of the books that are on my shelf but I have things from natural health and wild edibles and brain tanning hides and um, gosh and the thing is though too that it's not always just good to tap into your books and educate yourself and get get you know just constantly drilling yourself because um, our brains are meant to be challenged but they're also meant to be unfocused I am reading the coolest book right now it's called Tinker dabble doodle try and it is about how the brain works and so you will find that I read all kinds of books I don't just read books on what the way we live and the traditional skills but I read books that help me to become a better me um, hence the Bible as well um, but that book um, tinker dabble doodle try is um, the skills of unlocking um, your uh, unfocused side of your brain so those of you that are out there that play instruments um, you're already there in, in a regard that you know how to focus and unfocus at the same time while you're playing an instrument and for me in my she cave I get in here sometimes and I get so focused that I don't give my brain a break to unfocus and therefore I am not at the best I could be so some of the activities you can do to unfocus would be going out for a walk and again that's exercise which uh, gets your endorphins going which is an, an amazing way to unfocus um, doodling is a great way to unfocus when we were in school we were told to stop doodling but actually do, they have found that doodling um, opens up the unfocused side of the brain and enables you to um, really be uh, using both sides of your brain the she cave yes this is the she cave Chad instead of the man cave this is the she cave so or my office but it's my it's my my spot I really like it um, the mountain man did an amazing job in here and um, occasionally gets a little hot up here it's in the loft I have my window open right now because when the wood stove is going um, it feels like my skin is melting off so um, later in the winter it becomes a tank top and shorts kind of uh, place so it takes me to the tropics but anyway I'm I'm went off on a bunny trail um, so
So reading books that will help you uh, be a better person and utilize your gifts, your talents in a greater way is really good for you too. It's also good to read books that take you off to places, you know, um, the mountain man says that, you know, for him, it's really important for him to just constantly be educating. He doesn't like doing anything else where I like to sit down and get just engrossed in, in amazing books. I had mentioned to you about Kathy, um, earlier, um, in the, the, uh, Kathy Bryant and the other, uh, videos that I've done. Her link is down below. Her eBooks are all free. She has an amazing Christian, book ministry and she felt that God led her to put her books her ebooks on Amazon for free and they are amazing I, I get pick up her books and I can't put them down I have another friend that I will be sharing with you shortly um, I will soon be reading her new book that isn't out yet and I'm so excited for the opportunity and when I do get to read it she's another one that I just may as well just lay there for however many hours it takes and just finish it whether it's 36 or 48 whatever it is usually it's only about 36 32 because I can't put her books down and it just drives me nuts. But I will share that with you then. But it's also good to educate. And there's also really good authors out there. So down below in the link, and I totally zoned, I forget what it's called. But in the resources below is the first link in the resources. It is a link to a page on our website that will enable you to see all the books that I recommend. And that is a constantly growing page. So what I recommend that you do is that you bookmark that page go through there and scour the, that page. And if you don't own some of those books, I, I would encourage you to get them. They're very, very good books. Um, if you're looking for a good read, there's some of those. If you're looking for educational books on gardening, on canning, whatever the topic may be, I've got it covered and I am continuously expanding. So definitely check out that list of books. I'm going to show you a couple today. Like I said, it's overwhelming when you sit here. I mean, I could just start pulling books off and I love books. So I would, you know, just could go nuts. And the other nice thing about a lot of these books is a lot of these books are my dear friends and that is just so cool. So I, and mine are in there too. So that's just as cool. I'm just excited. Um, so, and, and I have such amazing friends and, and author friends and they are so talented and they are so skillful. So I always encourage you to check them out. I wanted to mention a couple books. Um, that I feel are good for those of you that are wanting to get into the kitchen and have not accomplished that. This one I haven't mentioned before and I'm just going to show you it this way. That is the cover. It's called Conquering Your Kitchen and it's by Anne Marie Rossi. You can find it by going to treyerwilderness.com slash conquering your kitchen. A lot of the things I mentioned uh, while I was in my kitchen earlier in these videos um, she also talks about um, having an organized kitchen, um, where to get started. Uh, she's It's a really nice book. It's a really good read. I got to interview her, so you can check her out in my podcasts um, also. Uh, but I highly encourage you, if you haven't been in the kitchen much, to check out her book. There are two other books that I'm going to highly recommend for the kitchen, and that is The Made From Scratch Life. This is my dear friend, Melissa K. Norris. She is a sweetheart and honestly a very dear friend of mine. And I'm so blessed to have her brand new book also, uh, The Modern Guide to Made From Scratch Living, and it's called Handmade. So you can find both of her books by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Melissa K. Norris. The links are below. But these books, um, I'm blessed to be in the Made From Scratch Life with one of my gluten-free recipes. Um, but Melissa and I have gotten together in Utah already. Uh, she is from Washington. We are so like-minded and just instantly connected. And I've been friends for quite a few years now. And uh, those books are really, really great for someone getting started in the kitchen and for anybody that's been in the kitchen a long time. Her recipes are amazing. Her website is amazing with the uh, boatload of recipes that she offers, and that is melissaknorris.com. Um, another book that I was blessed to receive right now to read is um, Your Best Year Ever, Michael Hyatt. If you have not heard of Michael Hyatt, he is an amazing educator and inspiration inspirationalist, if you will. Um, I've been following him for, gosh, since we're here, so like seven years, maybe more. Um, he is a best-selling author. He has a fantastic website 
with a lot of inspiration and education. If you have a business, he can even be of more help to you. Um, but it's a five-step plan for achieving your most important goals. I took his course a couple years ago. That um, I believe it is called "Best Your Best Year Ever," um, and it was an amazing course. His writings are fantastic. This is not the first book of his that I've read. Um, you can find this by going to treyerwilderness.com. Your best year ever. Links down below. But this is one of those that will help. Um, mold you into a better person. He just has such amazing um, suggestions and, and uh, alterations to our busy crazy world. I really like his materials and I wanted to share that with you because I think it's so important for us to really try to better ourselves not just with knowledge but you know um, there's ways that we can become better parents better wives and husbands, um, better friends, uh, better children, you know. So sometimes pride and varying other things get in the way, our busy schedule, and we neglect to see what's most important to us. And I think that the books I'm mentioning to you are those kind of books that are the ones that just help you to uh, have that aha moment sometimes and um, maybe just a little tips and tricks that you find in the midst of things can really help um, make your life a better place. My course, uh, I just totally zoned, uh, the treyerwildernessacademy.com will be opening soon and getting organized in a crazy bu busy world will be one of the courses that I'm going to be teaching because there's a lot of skills I've learned um, to make my day better that it doesn't always have to be just because I'm self-employed that I have to be on the stick and really uh, busting to get things done uh, that like I said you've got to take time for yourself you've got to do things um, take breaks those breaks can help you to uh, maintain and uh, keep the information that you're that you're learning versus it going in one ear and out the other the other book that I wanted to mention um, that I don't have a link for, but I will add, um, is Sarah uh, Van Brethnack's book. She has several books. Um, there are certain devotionals that are also in that main list if you click on the website. But the Simple Abundance Journal of Gratitude, this is something that you don't need to have. You could simply get a notebook and be frugal. But um, what is unique about this book is that in the journaling part of it she has all kinds of quotes and I wanted to read something to you today because of our gratitude side of things here gratitude unlocks the fullness of life it turns what we have into enough and more it turns denial into acceptance chaos to order confusion to clarity it can turn a meal into a feast a house into a home a stranger into a friend Gratitude makes sense of our past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. That was uh, written by Melody Beatty. And I just think that's so cool. You know, and like I said, gratitude, focusing on gratitude can make life so much better. So starting my day, um, I, I sit down and I reflect, I read my Bible, I take my morning slow, I get into my day, and um, then before I go to bed at night, I kind of brain dump and uh, get rid of all the thoughts I have in my head of all the things that I didn't get done today that need to get done tomorrow. That way I don't forget anything. That way I'm not laying there with my head spinning and go through turmoil thinking of all those things that I need to do. You know, it, it helps. It really, really helps. It gives me a good night's sleep, which is what I need to re reboost and rejuvenate and heal my body. So getting in these routines and having routines and remembering to take time for yourself. This morning I sat down and I played a card game called 13 with the Mountain Boy before we started our day. I'd already done my devotions and had my coffee, but it's also a way to unfocus so that when I get into my office, my brain is functioning at full capacity and I can be more productive in the limited time I allow in my office. So, But it also gave me quality time with my boy. And I did win. <laughs> it doesn't happen all the time. He's very good at that game. But the thing is, taking those those times, and, and then in that time, giving yourself time, take time to read. 
reading is such a valuable tool and the nice thing is we have the Kindles and the and the iPads and the iPhones and honestly I would be lost without them in the regard that I used to go to bed at night with a headlamp on and read a book. Well, the mountain man would stir, I'd turn my head, or something would happen, I'd turn my head, he'd look up from a, a dead sleep and be blinded. So it's really not a good way to do things. Um, and they do say that the blue lights are not good for you, so I try not to read too long. But one of the things I find is when I'm reading, it sort of puts me to sleep, and I end up in a really good resting sleep that way if I don't bounce the iPad off my head first. But that is my time to read, I'll, um, to read my fun books or my um, creative books. And then um, during the day, I take time to do my research in my knowledge-bound books. So you can do whatever you want, but there's so many books, There's so, like gardening I had mentioned earlier in the videos, that this is my time to dig into my gardening, dig into my herbal studies. Um, you know, we still have butchering going on, and we'll probably be canning some meat soon, but um, because the mountain boy and I need to go out and get our deer today, hopefully, we have two more days left, and, and today, um, and we have two other deer hanging out there that need to be butchered, so we are really blessed this year with food. You know, we've gone through some extremely rough times, and never once have we been cold and without a roof over our head and without food. So God has blessed us greatly. But taking this time during the winter months and fitting in, you know, educational things instead of sitting in front of the, that square box that has a lot of trash on it, and use that time wisely. Um, there's so many books. If you want to learn how to brain tan a deer hide, there are some great books. Um, if they're not in that list, I have some that will be being added to that. The other thing is you can join our academy and learn um, through videos and handouts, um, the step-by-step -step process on how to do stuff like that. So there's so many options and there's so many great materials out there and that's why I wanted to share these things with you over the 30-day period because I, if I don't know it, I have friends that do amazing things and I learn from them and I share their materials too. So um, what kind of books do you guys enjoy reading and what are you guys grateful for today? I would love to know. If you're watching this on the replay, please share that information with me. And what are books that you guys enjoy? What, what do you? Um, what are some things that you want to learn that you um, have on your to-do list? And if you haven't and you're new to following these videos, be sure to go to our website at treyerwilderness.com slash newsletter and sign up so that you can receive our uh, preparedness uh, worksheets as handouts um, so that you can kind of follow along. And if you're just starting this process with my 30-day program, go back and watch from day one. You can follow them all the way through. There's lots of tips and tidbits all the way through. And I try to share tips on gratitude as well as preparedness at the same time. So I hope that that helped you guys today. Um, there are so many books and I, I have to admit I am a journal addict and um, that's one thing I want to encourage you guys to do is to journal about the things that you're accomplishing in your life because it's pretty neat looking back. When I was cleaning up my office last week, I found my journal from 2010. So if you start a gratitude journal where you focus each day and, and write what you're grateful for and things that are happening, it's a pretty awesome thing to go back and see. What's also really neat is um, in one of the other journals I found, um, I went through the... Um, journaling process through a really hard time and you know read and I knew that that time frame was when I was surfing this really hard time and this really bad valley and it was really interesting to see my journal and to see how my gratitude shined through and how I was still so excited and blessed and and felt that way in my writing even though I was going through such a really awful time so it's pretty neat to see when you look back how your gratitude can really um, make a difference in your life. It really does change uh, the bad valleys to really good times. Even you know, even though you know it was a rough spot, it, it you still look back and you can see the good, and that's pretty cool. Chad says, "Oh, just the Bible. I'm grateful for my wife today. She's taking care of." Our sick hurt little girl oh I'm so sorry well sending prayers Chad and um, do I garden and have K 
cable, you must share what you what you read. Melody, I will share what I read. Um, I absolutely love reading, and um, when I find good books, even when I find, honestly, I haven't found too many not so good books. Um, I love to read, and I love, and I gain something from every book I read. But I will be continuing to share. I have a bunch of reviews coming out, and those books then also hit the master list. So. Um, definitely uh, keep checking and bookmark that page and keep checking back and as we do this and progress um, each month into the videos um, I had mentioned earlier that I'm gonna do a video um, a, a week probably um, is what I'm gonna shoot for uh, I haven't decided on a day and time yet but I will announce that tomorrow but um, when I'm reading things I will definitely let you know and um, guys I really thank you for joining me and joining me in my she cave here today um, I am going to get out for my hunt and try to get a buck today and uh, get some more meat for my freezer. So be grateful. Uh, look for the, the blessings in your life, whether big or small, and just be grateful and continue to add more knowledge and, and educate yourself and keep yourself um, crisp and, and vibrant and keep your mind going by being focused and unfocused. It's a really great thing. And, and take time for yourself every day. It's a good thing. It makes you a better person. And 15 minutes a day is something that everybody should be able to give up. Thank you, Chad. Thanks a lot. I appreciate that. God bless you, too. We'll keep you guys in, in our prayers. And everybody, thanks so much for joining me today. Be grateful and have a good day. I will see you tomorrow at noon. God bless.